All right, well, we've just finished looking through motifs and illusions in Colossians. And as already mentioned, we're going to spend some time now in Philippians and specifically Philippians chapter two. Today, our goal is just to look through the intro of Philippians. And as we go through Philippians, here are some interesting questions you can think about through this study. Where is my identity found? How can I experience joy among persecution and sufferings? And what does a life of humble obedience look like? Let's find out as we dive into Philippians. Know the Word is a McGregor podcast that offers a relevant and refreshing focus on understanding and applying God's Word to your life. We'll discuss life-changing truths of biblical faith that comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of Christ. I'm your host, Nathan Bottomley, and joining me today is Colton Silver and Ryan Flint. Join us as we open the Bible so we can know the Word. Well, welcome Colton and Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome to be here. Fun fact. Uh, actually, well, let, let's reverse this. So, do you guys have anything interesting about yourselves you'd like to share? Um, <coughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> That's a good question. I lived in a shed for about a year. That's terrifying. Um, that I had a seal with uh, insulation, but the spray insulation. <laughs> we may need um, to edit that out. I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't have any interesting facts. How about this? My wife can't smell. So oh. that's not about me. That is interesting. But it does man. benefit me in life. But it does benefit. Cheerleading accident, <laughs> olfactory lobe, no longer works. Literally, no sense of smell. Interesting. Mm. All right. And my fun fact, uh, which I never, I don't have any fun facts. However, Ryan is my boss. So this will be interesting. Fun fact. That's a fun fact. All right. Well, thank you both for being here. So here's the deal. We're going to talk about Philippians. So we just spent five episodes going through five different motifs we see in Colossians. And we're jumping now to another letter uh, written by the same author, and that is Philippians. So we're going to spend the seven episodes left in this season. That includes this one, looking through where we've landed in Philippians. So our goal today is not to study all of chapter one to get to chapter two, but to talk about Philippians as a whole get into it, what things are pertinent to be able to study it. And at the same time, we will briefly look at the contents of chapter one before diving into the beginning of chapter two and going through the verses rather uh, strategically the rest of the season. So let me start with this. This is a easy lob ball question, I think. Who wrote Philippians? The Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul. Yes. I with a little that. help from Timothy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And we see that uh, right in verse one, basically Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. All right. Uh, let's get some context then. Where was it written from? Okay. Traditionally, we would say it's written from Rome. There's been some dispute upon that, but most theologians land on that it was written from Rome during one of Paul's imprisonments. Okay. One of Paul's imprisonments. Do you have a leaning on that? <laughs> What does that mean? First or second? First. <laughs> first or first. <laughs> okay. Just for those who don't know what from Rome is alluding okay. to. Okay. We're going with first, uh, first time in prison. All right. Well, here's the thing. So now we know a little bit about the author. We know that Timothy has helped him. Uh, and that will come in helpful because we're going to see Timothy comes up again later. And yes, in chapter two. So we will see him in a little more detail later. Now, Philippians, I think the title suggests, is written to those whom are Philippians. So this is the church in Philippi. Can y'all tell me a little bit about the Philippians? Yeah. One of the most interesting things is like they were a very patriotic society. Like they were uh, Roman citizens at heart. So like when uh, Paul came in you look in Acts 16 where you could find more context of Paul ministering to these people, he would proclaim like Jesus is Lord and Savior. He proclaimed that Jesus is King. Well, that flew in the face of the people at Philippi. They threw him in prison right away because simply saying Jesus is king is going against what they know as, um, at the moment, Caesar is king. So it's like it flied in the face of the culture at the time. The gospel was something that like um, broke so many things at that time why Paul was in prison. And now he writes from another prison. So it's just fascinating to see that. That's a great answer. Thank you. <laughs> very, very well done. One thing I'll add, we, talk, we mentioned in these notes, uh, also in Acts 16, mm -hmm. the vision of the Macedonian man uh, and Paul is led to plant the church in Philippi. 
and, and interestingly enough, this is the first church in Europe. Mm. This is the church at Philippi really? uh, that, that Paul starts. That's just interesting. I found that to be an interesting fact. Yeah. And I'm, I'm coupling with what Colton already said. Yeah, very expat, right? Like if you were a soldier and you wanted to retire, you ended up in Philippi, it seems. And so you were a yeah. patriotic people. And that's important to know because that influences some of how and what Paul writes as we continue on. So now we're talking about the Philippians. So let's add a question to this. So what were the Philippians? I mean, minus the expat piece, what were the Philippians like? What were they dealing with? They were a uh, very poor people. Uh, they were, they, they loved Paul we'll talks more about that. I think later in this episode, but, um, Paul was very near and dear to them. They, they were poor. They were dealing with persecution. They were dealing with false teachers, uh, false messengers, much like the church at Corinth that we're going through in our current Sunday morning corporate worship study. Uh, and so Paul loves them. They love Paul. And there are a lot of similarities. Uh, both love the Lord, both dealt with persecution. And that kind of helped kind of create a little bit of a bond for them. Yeah, going off of that, one of the things with false teachers coming in is that <clears throat> they were mainly Jews coming in saying, hey, you Gentiles have to accord with all these rituals, all these certain things. And where Paul literally gives his resume and says, I count it all like but nothing is worth anything. Rubbish. Rubbish, right? That's the specific word? Yep, chapter three. <laughs> rubbish. But he counts it all rubbish. And to simply say, hey, like everything is found in Christ, no matter what you did. So right. like we see some of those evidences of false teachers as Jews coming into the church. Right. So these are expats. They're poor. Dealing with false teachers coming into the church. Jews coming in saying conform mm -hmm. to their legalistic ways. All right. Well, so we know a little bit about Paul. We know a little bit about the Philippians, what they were like, what they're dealing with, you know, contextual things. So what is the point then? Well, yeah. What is the point of this letter? Like, why did Paul bother to write to them? Yeah. Um, one of the things people most often run to when they think of Philippians, it's a letter of joy, which it is like, that's one of the main themes of it. But one of the realities you see, if you read through Philippians and if you read through the collection of Paul's uh, prison letters, which is Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, you see this reality of in Christ, like our identity is in Christ. If you read Philippians, you notice the front end of the book is pointing towards the Christ hymn in chapter two. The back end of the book is pointing back to the Christ hymn. So it's all found in Christ. So you see that main theme of being in Christ over and over and over. And you see those sub points underneath of like having joy in Christ, having fellowship in Christ. Yeah, it's interesting too, when you read through the, through the book and you do some context study, you realize how much this church supported Paul. It almost makes me think of like a church sitting out of, now, you know, Paul wasn't sent by this church. He was, right. he was, he was supported by them at the very least financially. Mm. Uh, they sent uh, Epaphroditus, to Rome to help Paul in that Mecca of sin in a place that needed Christ in a big, big way. And so their support of him, one of the reasons I think he wanted to write this letter back was to kind of update, you know, we, the same reason we at with church would have a mission team come back and tell us what the Lord did, what is God doing, what is the need. Uh, likewise, Paul took this opportunity to write back to the church of Philippi and update them on, hey, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what God is doing, and this is what the Lord is leading me to tell you. So it's just kind of, kind of neat to see that happening in this context, and we see kind of versions of that happening here in our own context at McGregor. Yep. And you guys have mentioned this, so I'm going to comment on it as well. So Philippians, we've said Paul is in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's his first imprisonment, we can presume, though this is the speculation, could be like a house arrest. I mean, he seems to be free to write. He's with Timothy. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, if you're under house arrest, you can't work. And we've just said the Philippians were poor. And one of the things they do is they, they basically like rally and collect this gift and send it to Paul. And Paul recognizes that they maybe don't necessarily have the means to give, and yet they do. And, he, and in part of this letter and writing back to them, yeah, he writes, it's like a thank you. Thank you for doing this. I'm going to explain what happened with Epaphroditus, why he's coming back, because we read in chapter two, he gets ill, uh, near death. So explaining what's going on with Epaphroditus, why he's back. Thank you for the gift. And then you have that, that wonderful piece in chapter four that, you know, I have learned to be content. And so I'm so thankful y'all care for me. I care for you and please be encouraged. I am, I am doing well. I am content. 
All right. Now you've mentioned joy. So what, and we've kind of, we're kind of in this question. So like what themes are appearing throughout this book? I mean, Colton mentioned obviously joy. You just mentioned again, Nate. Joy is one of the themes, you know, fellowship in Christ leads, leads to joy. Uh, lasting joy is found only in Christ. And then that should encourage us as believers, as brothers in Christ to fellowship together mm-hmm. and only enhance our ability for fellowship being rooted in Christ. So that's, that's kind of one of the, one of, one of the main themes. Uh, joy leads to contentment in Christ. Uh, and this journey that, that we call life. Um, and the interesting thing too, is there are a lot, a lot of themes in the book of Philippians that really are all over the place in the New Testament. But one of the things that Paul seems to do that's kind of, kind of unique is Paul really hones on those themes and then applies it to everyday life. This is, how, this is how this theme, this truth impacts you each and every day, Monday through Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a lot of, lot of actionable takeaway uh, in Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting to see, like you mentioned how Paul was in partnership with this church and uh, they were financially giving like him support for his missions. And they were one of the most biggest advocates for that of funding his mission trips. And one of the main themes along with in Christ, joy, humble obedience we see is also, I'm going to throw out a Greek word, but koinonia. And this is something that, <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, that's at least a 10 cent word. Koinonia. <laughs> Can you spell that? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> okay. I mean, he can say it, so let's define it. <laughs> yes. So basically, uh, if you're familiar with Greek, Koine Greek was common Greek. So it just means common. So koinonia is something people have in common. So it could be fleshed out as, and you'll see it so many times throughout the book of Philippians of fellowship, partnership, or sharing. So it's this idea like the church had this koinonia, this sharing, this partnership together, and we see this throughout the book with Epaphroditus, with Titus, uh, Timothy, sorry, of their fleshing out this partnership that Paul has with the church, Paul has with Christ, the church has with Christ. Yeah. And one of the things that's wonderful about partnerships is that to make them work requires a great deal of humility, which by the way, a little bit of uh, uh, foreshadowing here. When we get to chapter two, I would argue the whole theme of chapter two from verse one to 30 is humility. Well, let me take a brief second uh, and just mention that this episode is sponsored by the McGregor Young Adult Life Group. If you are on the hunt for a community that encourages and supports one another in the journey of following Christ faithfully, look no further. Our McGregor Young Adult Life Group is tailor-made for individuals like you. Whether you're post-college, engaged, or even happily married, join us each Sunday at 9.30 a.m. as we come together to explore the wisdom of the Bible and deepen our understanding of Christ Jesus. We invite you to be a part of the McGregor Young Adult Life Group this Sunday. All right, so here's the deal. We've looked at the entirety of Philippians, the things that matter to understand chapters one through four. Now, if we're going to pick up our study next episode in chapter two, which is the plan, uh, we need to get through real quick. Let's just look what happens in chapter one. Now I've got it divided into arguably three sections and we can work through those. We're not going to dispute them, but we could, uh, I'm just kidding. So let's just, let's just go a chunk at a time. If I'm looking at the ESV, these breaks are semi-natural in my ESV translation. Yeah. All right. Philippians 1, 1 to verse 11. What's going on in those first 11 verses? Um, With Paul, he's more open greetings. Of course, he's introducing himself. He's saying, you know, it's Paul and Timothy. We're sending you this letter. And he addresses the church, the church of Philippi. So that's why it's called Philippians. And then he also goes into an opening prayer for them and thanksgiving for that partnership they have together that fellowship they have in Christ and that they have joy. So it it identifies those main themes, but also clarifies that he is in prison. He's saying in that prayer, like my imprisonment has served for the gospel. And he'll later go into more detail of what that means. Yep. So we get the greeting, some of the context, and then yeah, that prayer of thanksgiving for all that's going on despite his circumstances. Mm -hmm. All right. That moves us into the next section, which continues on. And hey, we get some famous verses out of this next section. But what happens then from verses 12 to 26? Yeah, Paul kind of starts by, as Colton talked about, you know, he's mentioned the imprisonment. Now he's kind of re- reflecting on it. And he's telling, hey, look, not, not only has, has me being imprisoned not prevented, has it prevented the gospel, but it's actually promoted the gospel. It's given him opportunity, and he's been faithful through it. You know, it's interesting. Many scholars believe that, as you mentioned, Nate, you mentioned house arrest. You know, he was likely not 
in some dungeon cell or somewhere, mm-hmm. but rather tethered to, chained to Roman soldiers, guards, uh, and these these men would have heard him pre- preaching, praying, preparing, talking to the Lord, and it's believed that actually several of those men found Christ uh, in hearing and seeing Paul preach and live out the gospel mm-hmm. while being incarcerated. So, so it's just pretty pretty neat. Paul's able to kind of share that with them. I would imagine that as the church that we've talked about, it was kind of his church that was sending and supporting and encouraging him and loved and cared for him. They were probably really encouraged to hear uh, that he is telling them that, man, the gospel is prevailing. Uh, he's encouraging them. The gospel is still being uh, advanced. Yeah, I think going off of that, that you get this like conclusion of like to live as Christ, to die as gain. Like you see that conclusion of like after all this, his imprisonment, these people um, talking about the gospel, even against Paul, but he's happy in the end. Like to live as Christ means that he could still serve the church that he could serve the church at Philippi and he could still plant more churches. But the thing is he's in a prison. He doesn't know if he's going to get executed the next day. So he even contemplates death, like to die is gain. It's still gain because he gets to be with Christ. So you see that battle between him of like, you know, either way I'm going to live for Christ. Yeah. And I would encourage you if you're listening, first of all, before, you know, if we're diving into Philippians chapter two, read chapter one, just read all of chapter one. And I mean, the verse that you're referencing right now, which is a great verse that comes out of Philippians and a lot of people know it. Verse 21 in chapter one, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And that contemplation, and you see in verse 24 is interesting, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. You're the Philippians. And Paul continues on as he goes in this letter. All right. If you're looking again, this is an ESV break, uh, but Then we get this last little section, which will then launch us into chapter two. So verses 27 through 30 have a mild change in tone and subject, I guess. So what comes out of those verses right before we go into chapter two? Colton. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like... Young young men first. Oh, thank you. This is a young adult podcast. You're right. I'm kind of the resident senior here. How old am I? How old am I? Yeah. 35. Okay. Half past 30. 22. Half past 30. 22. <laughs> or if I was Nathan, in honor of my Canadian friends, I am year 35. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's just grade school we do that with. It's great. Grade one, grade two. Not this first grade, second grade, I'm in, gr- I'm in grade 35. Grade 35. You've graduated <laughs> 34 times. I'm just kidding. He's made it that far. Um, so <laughs> in 27, we see like um, Paul's main like... Uh, exhortation to the church at Philippi and it's to live worthy for the gospel. And basically what he's jabbing at right here in the type of language that's being used is he's talking about more citizenship, like live. We mentioned this as one of the backgrounds to Philippians, but it also comes into play right here where he says in that first verse of 27, like let your manner of life, your conduct be as though a good citizen, a good citizen of heaven in light of your citizenship to, well, Caesar at the time. Right. And John MacArthur's got five S's that I really <laughs> love. Um, and he's some <coughs> of this book. Stand, <clears throat> share, strive, and suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ. Uh, and we're going to see that. We've seen it already. And as we dive into the book of Philippians, we're going to see those themes throughout this book. Uh, we're mm-hmm. called to stand. We're called to share the gospel. We are called to be aware that we are going to suffer. But even through that suffering, like Paul did, and like Paul is encouraging and admonishing the church at Philippi to do, we are to suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ and strive to bring him glory and not be deterred by our circumstances. Yeah, absolutely. And I think to comment, and again, I'm just going to put verses to what both of y'all have have said. Colton, what you're talking about, I mean, you got to think, if these are expat people, if they are former soldiers, they're probably, and I mean, we can, based on what's in Philippians, I mean, they're proud that they're Philippians. Yeah. They're proud of their place. They're proud of their heritage. They're, they're proud of their, they're just proud they're Philippians. And Paul reminds them, it's in verse 27, right? Conduct yourselves at ESP. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Right. Just a reminder that like the way you live ought to be because you're proud of your citizenship in heaven. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be reminded of, of all of that in chapter two. And then Ryan, what you said, I mean, we talk about this verse a lot. Philippians 1, uh, 29, for it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but suffer for his sake. There is a promise of suffering. We've talked about this even just in Colossians, that prosperity uh, gospel idea. Christ does not save you from hardship. 
Christ does not save you from suffering. Christ does not make life uh, easy, breezy, beautiful. Mm. Uh, but the theme of this letter, there is a joy in Christ and in Christ alone. And so as we dive into chapter two, that's what we're going to see that, that Paul is going to encourage that if you want to find this joy, if you want to be in union with one another, there's that fellowship idea. You need to be humble. And so there's going to be a command in verses one and four. We're going to see Christ's example. We're going to see three faithful examples of, of humble serving at the end of chapter two, and then what to expect as we walk through trying to be humble and live that out for Christ. So that is going to be our study in Philippians, two, uh, Philippians chapter two, starting next episode. I look forward to it. All right. To our friends that are listening, we trust you will let the word of Christ dwell in you richly this week. No matter how you are getting this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment or review. It really helps us out. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, and be sure to check out our other McGregor podcast channels. Just head over to knowthewordpodcast.com for all the details. Thanks for listening.